on this video we want to focus on the cloning tools and it may in fact take a couple of videos because there are a handful of tools and uh, to look at so let's get started the first one is the uh, cloning uh, stamp tool had this one for a long time and uh, actually it also has a pattern stamp variation um, but we're going to focus for the moment certainly on just the standard cloning stamp tool and uh, of course pick the tool and this is a what we call what I call two-step process you have to option click the tool generally where you think you want to pull some information from and then you let go and you go to where you want to put the information and start pressing uh, your mouse now um, and it's very important to notice that there's a relationship of where the tool is cloning from and where it's cloning the information to and that relationship notice stays the same so it's always pulling in this case from the bottom little crosshair and uh, it's that simple now quite often for uh, a couple of different reasons which we'll talk about we may want to do a new option click go someplace and then start cloning that area okay and um, also, um, we uh, generally uh, want to set the size of the brush and so that you can see the size of the brush. And to do that, we have to make a change in um, the Photoshop preferences. It defaults um, now uh, in a way that I honestly don't think is uh, makes a lot of sense but you go here to Photoshop preferences cursors and for your brushes all of your brushes you generally want to see um, the full brush size um, and so this is really the preference that I would suggest you want instead of the standard and so I'm going to uh, say OK and now notice that whatever size brush I pick I see it on the screen in true size and that really does make a lot of a lot more sense so not only do we want to pick the brush size but we also generally for cloning you want to generally use a soft or feathered edge and that means the no hardness um, a solid crisp edge would be a hundred percent hardness and so you want it low or very low or simply pick one of these existing brushes that already has um, some feathering in it and then you can always adjust the size of the brush okay so um, it's really up to you in terms of what you what you choose here but at any rate once again we want to then um, <clears throat> option click go to where we want to put the the new information and and place it now uh, I'm going to switch to the uh, dune photograph real quick and I want to show you a couple of things that you want to be careful of and um, for uh, two reasons one is to uh, keep from having repetition repetitious patterns and just to give some variety we often will option click in a new area uh, on our image uh, so that we can keep it um, looking more natural this is something that sometimes happens I'll exaggerate it we sometimes will mistakenly clone an area and then clone over that area and keep doing that and you can very easily see that what happens is you get a repetition of the same texture or imagery and if anybody looks um, um, at it they're gonna see that 
that doesn't look natural and, and real and has obviously been um, edited. So um, here again, the people that do this um, really work to try to create some uh, really smooth transitions that will avoid um, anything that um, has the appearance of, um, of uh, being uh, modified. So um, you just by working it and really paying attention to what you're doing can create um, effects that in fact feel um, very natural and then you're really able to use the the tool effectively. So always keep those things in mind when using the basic cloning tool or any of the other cloning tools as well. So um, there you have it. <clears throat> the um, uh, while, Real quickly, um, the cloning um, pattern, the pattern stamp tool, um, the way that works is you have to, when you pick this tool, notice we're going to get some changes up here in our options bar. And when I pick the pattern stamp tool, it gives me this up here, which is a group of pre-existing patterns. And so when I pick one of those, in fact, and then use the tool, what I get is, in fact, that pattern dropping down, repeating on my canvas. And they can be used sometimes for web pages and things of that nature. You can also um, very easily create your own patterns. You use the, the selection tool, the rectangular selection tool. You hold the shift key because your, so, your uh, selection must be in a square. It must be a square. It can't be a circle or um, the lasso tool. Um, it must be a square, any size that you want. And then you make that selection and then you go edit, define as a pattern. And when we do that, we can give it a name or just say OK. And now, when I go back to the, uh, the patterns and I pick the uh, pattern stamp tool, you will see that, in fact, one of our patterns now is literally the little piece of dune that I created right there. And it becomes a pattern of its own. And um, <clears throat> we can now pick that and literally paint that as a pattern on any background and you see how it does that and so we can use either one of the the predefined patterns or we can create our own pattern and again it needs to be a, a, a square area with the marquee tool and then go up under edit to define um, pattern and you will have it automatically saved in that palette and then you can utilize it.